Let's go watch it in 2D. No, let's go watch it in 3D. But if we watch it in 3D, then is it worth the cost? I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. Y'all jokers must be crazy. Hello, hello, hello. This is Adolf Vega and James Tate. And today we're reviewing uh, Suicide Squad. As always on 3D or 2D.com reviews, I'll talk about the 3D element first. James, you didn't see it in 3D, correct? No, I did not see it in 3D. Okay, I watched it in 3D uh, with my wife, and it actually looked pretty good. There were some things that kind of flew out at the, you know, at the outside the camera. But you can see some pretty nice layers in between the characters and, like, the setting. And it looked good. I, I was actually happy I watched it in 3D. I was never wowed by it. There was never, like, one scene that was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. It was just like, you know, you could tell that they put a, did a good, decent job of it. So, um, you know, overall, I did like it. I didn't love it in 3D, but I didn't think it was terrible either. Toward the end yeah, of the movie... It was, was kind of like meh. No, I kind of liked it. Um, you know, the beginning of the movie had more 3D to it than the later half. And then, like, the credits scene, um, which we're not going to talk about the credits, really, but that was actually really cool in 3D, how they did that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, some of the um, character profiles... Um, which they do a few times, look kind of cool in 3D as different things are, like, moving around. So I actually liked it. Um, you know, I don't love it, but it wasn't, like, the most amazing 3D. Um, I'll probably give it a good 3D, where it was satisfying, but it wasn't, like, amazing or anything. They did put some effort in here, and you could tell, but it was nice. All right. <laughs> Let's All right. move on to the movie itself. Okay, so this is not going to have any spoilers. Um, we're going to have a spoiler-filled version of this review. We're going to give you some basics here um, so you know what's going on. Um, so first, foremost, this actually takes place almost immediately after the events of Batman vs. Superman. So if you haven't seen that movie, it's probably a good idea to watch it beforehand. <laughs> You're going to be kind of confused unless you uh, know about it, honestly. So... Um, you know, we're not going to say why, but there's definitely a direct connection there. Um, so uh, the main you know, people here is Amanda Waller, who works for the government and part of the Argos team. And uh, she wants to hire or get different villains. Um, and they are going to go on a mission to destroy a really bad villain. And if... They fall out of line. They actually, you know, have different ways to stop them, and basically kill them if they fall in line, out of line. And if it goes falls apart, then they could just blame them because they're villains, and who cares, you know? So that's why it's a Suicide Squad because they could any one of them can die, and they don't really care. And yeah, exactly. Um, so. This is actually a big introduction to a lot of these characters. We have never seen them before um, on screen, and um, actually, like, all of them. <laughs> um, so, okay, the Joker obviously has been in almost every, you know, DC Batman-related movie, but besides the Joker, everyone else here has never been in a movie. So we have just a quick rundown of the characters here. Amanda Waller, which we talked about before, government agent, um, she was pretty much on top of uh, her game here. Um, you really don't like her, but I kind of like that you don't like her because it's a good character, you know? She is, uh, if, if you're going to think about it character-wise, she is basically a woman version of Nick Fury. She's been uh, depicted, uh, basically a lot of fans would say that. It's kind of accurate. Yeah, and I think she's a little bit more hardcore than Nick Fury. <laughs> yeah, she is, by the way. <laughs> She, she's a little bit more unlikable. I mean, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, of course, does, plays always plays a likable character, honestly. But, um, you know, she, she's a good character. 
And, and also, um, she is in the um, animated series as well. Yeah, so a bunch of these characters have been in animated movies and or animated TV shows. Um, so, But for the actual theatrical, we haven't seen these characters. And Harley Quinn is um, one of the next ones, played by Margaret Robbie. And I really like her. She was like very much like the animated version of Harley Quinn from the um, Batman animated series, where she's a crazy psycho, you know. And, and for those who don't know, Harley Quinn's first appearance was not in a comic book. It, would, it was actually in Batman the animated series. That's the reason why it's, it's to say, oh, she's really like the animated series instead of like the comic books, because that was her first appearance. And yes, Harley Quinn is a lot like um, her um, her appearance or uh, what what she did. Now, if you're wondering about her costume, there's actually a callback to her costume in the film. There's a little nugget. Yeah, and I actually liked how they handled the costume, where she had full reign to wear whatever she wanted. So no one could say that it was sexist or weird. She chose that costume in the movie to work, <laughs> yeah, you know. So exactly. she had multiple costumes in there, and um, you know they could have done different things, but I think it worked for her. Um, so let's keep going. It's a really quick rundown of these characters. We also get um, a new version. Well, okay, a different version in the comics, but the same basic character in Deadshot, which is Will Smith. Now, in the comics, uh, Deadshot is not a African American. He's like an Englishman, um, but I don't really mind him because I really do like Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, he the um, I didn't have a problem with them changing race because I mean Deadshot usually has a mask on though. So yeah, and they kept that pretty accurate to the character. And you know, one of the main things of Deadshot is that he is these are villains. They really are bad guys, and they don't really care. But they all have some, to a degree, redeemable features. And, you know, his feature is that, you know, he loves his daughter. And, you know, I think the, those scenes are actually pretty well done. Um, but I'm not going to really talk about those scenes specifically. Let's just move on. Um, but the character Deadshot, you know, he has amazing aim. And like Deadshot, you would think, um, the name-wise. Um, and he actually shows that awesome um, – you know, uh, what is the word for a gunmanship or, or I don't know. You're talking about uh, marksmanship. Exactly. Yeah. So he shows that he is amazing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I add it, and that that's what he's known for. Uh, there is a little cool see, scene uh, scene with him and Batman. I won't won't spoil it, but I will say that there is kind of a cool scene between them. Now, um, that's a good thing you mentioned that Batman does have maybe an extended cameo in this movie. <laughs> Um, and there is a, another cameo of another DC. I'm not going to mention who that one is in this non-spoilery one, um, but you know, I think they're actually they well handled those. I guess uh, good guys in the movie. You know, they weren't that much in the movie itself. You know. Yeah. Um, so we also got here um, Captain Boomerang, um, which is an Australian guy, and um, and you a know, Flash villain. Too. A Flash villain, yes. Um, so I didn't really like Captain Boomerang in this movie. <laughs> uh, he was okay, uh, but I mean, he's one of those characters that doesn't really get much time to shine, honestly. Yeah. So I mean, he's okay, but he's just kind of there. Um, there's an ex gangster named El Diablo, and he is has pyrokinetic powers, mm -hmm. and I actually liked him a lot more than I thought I was going to. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, he doesn't really want to be part of this. He's not, you know, he knows his powers and he doesn't really like to use his powers. And when he does, it is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it he's a very interesting character and I actually like how they handled him. Um, yeah. Here's another one, uh, Killer Croc, which is a Batman character. Um, he was okay, I guess. Um, they didn't give him that many lines. A few of them were okay. It was kind of ambiguous if Killer Croc was a human or a metahuman or if he was some kind of mutation. It, it just wasn't really there. Yeah. Um, there, and then the, I guess Rick Flagg is a, a military that, um, guy that is working with Amanda Waller. And he actually was pretty cool, you know. 
I get a good sense that he really, you know, knows the military and knows how to control them. And, you know, he's a big leader in the movie and the comic series. And you could kind of sense that he takes control yeah. of it pretty well. Exactly. Um, he's, I guess, relationship wise with the character um, June Moon, who is mm-hmm. the sorceress or not really sorceress. The um, Her name isn't sorceress. It is the I'm drawing a blank here. Um, Enchantress. Yeah. And, um, you know, here's the thing that I kind of, I really do like about this movie. They do have all these characters. They give every character, every major one, a little backstory scene. You get enough yeah. about them that you know what their basics are. And they actually, like, throw the on the screen uh, multiple, you know, stats on there. And, like, I don't have enough time to read all those stats, but... They give you a nice little flashback. You get their basics, you know, which is both good and bad because you want more. You also have Katina, or, uh, yeah, Katina, or no, Katana, yeah. and that's Flag's bodyguard, and uh, she is Japanese, and she has a sword that could seal the sto- seal steal the soul using her sword. I'll try to say that five times fast. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and um, she's pretty cool as a, I guess, not really a ninja, but a warrior. And yeah. we also have a character named Slipknot, which I um, don't know that much about, because that's not that big a deal. We're not going to mention why. Yeah. And we have the Joker, um, and the Joker here is totally different Joker than with Jared Leto. Now, um... He was in the movie for like maybe five minutes total. Um, what did you think of this Joker? I liked him. I th- thought he was a good mix of a lot of different Jokers. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe, you know, a little bit younger Joker. But, yeah, I liked him. Yeah, I agree. He really did feel like a mix between um, the, I guess, the 1980s or 89 version of Batman um, with Nick, um, that Joker. Um, the gangster Joker with a little bit of the psycho, uh, sociopath Joker, you know? Uh, it, well, okay. To me, personally, it felt like a mix of three Jokers. Um, the uh, the first Joker it felt mixed with the gangster aspect was the whole um, – the 80s Joker. Then more of like the, the cra- more crazy, more like wanting destruction and chaos uh, from the 2008 Joker – um, and then the last Joker I felt it was actually mixed in. I think that Mark Hamill Joker was a big inspiration. Yeah, so yeah. I like him. Um, obviously, he's not in the movie that long, so I really I don't feel comfortable really judging his performance because it's not really his movie, you know. <laughs> so you know, it's yeah. Um, but I do like him. I do want to see more of him, and I really really think that. Um, that's probably going to be a rated R cut of this movie that has an extended cut again. Um, and that's going to have a lot more of him. I think the actor said that a lot of his scenes were cut out, um, which is it's PG 13. So it is a little bit more, which didn't really feel PG 13. It felt pretty almost R rated with the violence here. No, you know, nudity or actual blood and guts really, you know, but it was pushing that edge, you know, so they're all sent out on a mission, um, and things don't really work the way they need to. Um, and um, there's another villain here that's kind of a secret, and um, they eventually kind of work out, work together to take them down. And um, that's where, for me, kind of fell a little bit apart, where... I wasn't really 100% sure what was going on. They did reveal things toward the end, but I was like, what? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, There is uh, uh, one thing about this film that a lot of people, um, or not me personally, this is just a person I had a problem with and I can see maybe others having an issue with. I don't know if you did. But um, some of the aspects of the film like, especially towards the end, are kind of confusing. Yeah. Like, they, it's kind of hard to follow. Yeah, I agree with, 100% with that. Well, I mean, at, it's pretty simple overall, but, like, 
just the overarching narrative of how um, this other bad guy or villain, um, you know, is why they're doing what they're doing is a little bit vague and a little bit confusing. Um, so I think they could have cleaned that up a little bit. But I still think this um, cast actually is pretty good. Um, I actually thought they got along pretty well. And I think it was interesting to watch these villains. You know, they admit they're villains. They do bad things time to, every once in a while. And um, it was different. It felt not like – it had a different style to it that I actually appreciated. You know, it kind of had a, like a – I guess a punk kind of vibe to it. That, And um, I appreciated that. Um, I, you know, I, I do think the story is a little bit muddled, you know, I think they could have been tightened up a little bit to make it a little bit more clear what happened. Um, I do really like how there was a few scenes where they got to see, um, the villains in a different alternate reality, I guess, and what they would have liked for their life to be. I thought that was actually really well handled. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. You do? Yeah, I. You, when you're talking about the theme, we could definitely like talk about that because that's basically what it is. Now, um, you know, there's this huge cast here. Um, I, I think they really try to focus on Harley and Deadshot, uh, the main two characters of this movie. And I really do like Will Smith and Margaret Robbie in their perspective roles as Deadshot and... Harley Quinn, um, and the, some of the rest of them are kind of in the background, you know, some of them are, like, really thrown in there really late, and it's like, oh, yeah, that person, it's like, huh, who's that, you know, so I do think they could have done a little bit better, giving each character a little bit more time, there's one scene in a bar that I actually thought was pretty well done, I would have liked a little bit longer of that scene, you know. I bet, I bet it was cut for time, it seemed like it could have gone longer with, like, with more dialogue, but this... This could be a trend where we get, like, extended versions of kind of every movie. Yeah, and, like, Enchantress, um, she was interesting, you know, a very powerful uh, sorceress. And um, I, I, I kind of, I don't know if I really like how she was, when she was, a, you know, it's basically a dual role, like the Hulk. And um, when she was Enchantress, I really wasn't sure what she was doing, or she kind of didn't... I don't know. Her powers are not really given explanation. So just like she has magic, she can teleport. What else? You know, she could give people visions of you. You know, but I wasn't really clear what that was going on there. Um, but you know what? I thought it was fine for what it was. It, it's a kind of a different style of movie than a traditional superhero movie. You know, they do eventually save the day, kind of, and. Um, I think it works. Um, I think they kind of stumble a little bit with some of the story elements, but I do like it. I do had fun with it. Um, what do you think overall? I give this movie probably a 7 out of 10. I actually agree with you. I give it a 7 too. Um, you know, it has some issues. What issues do you, would you like to, without spoiling it, mention more? James? Well, the, okay, so the, I would say that personally the biggest problem with the film is the third act because it's very confusing and I'm not really sure what they were going for. There's lots of elements that weren't explained. So that's the biggest problem with it. Okay. But overall, it was still a fun, enjoyable, interesting ride, you know, not like anything you've ever seen really before on screen. And so, you know, what would you think of the style and how it presented the characters and all that? Yeah. I would say that it it's, it has a pretty good tone. It's, it's unique. It's kind of like a punk rock feel. But, uh, yeah, I felt it was a pretty good theme. Yeah, I definitely um, would have liked a little bit more with Harley Quinn and Joker. They do give some backstory there, but, you know, I was just really wanting to see more of that and how that became to where it became, because he kind of skipped around a little bit there. You know, there's a lot, there is more flashbacks, um, like Batman vs. Superman, but I think these flashbacks make more sense in the context of the story, you know? 
and I appreciate them more for giving more, more character development. So I do like it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I guess we're in agreement here. Um, we're both giving it a 7 out of 10. And, you know, it's a flawed movie, but it's not terrible. It's different. And I can appreciate different kinds of movies, you know. All right. Uh, that, gonna... Exactly. Yeah, that, right. that makes sense. All right. It's going to be it for the spoiler-free version. Um, we tried our best not to spoil here. And um, it's kind of hard um, when they have so many different characters. But, yeah, um, that's going to be it. Bye. Bye. You irritate or vex me. I'm known to be quite vexing. I'm just forewarning you. You die. If they get caught, we throw them under the bus. All right, so that's going to wrap up this podcast. Remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, love, whatever. Heart it. Be something. 3D or 2D.com can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And if you want to send us email, our email address is email 3 d or 2 d at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.